Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Uh, we've got a weather update. Uh, Typhoon Odette was just named uh, as it uh, became uh, a strong enough uh, storm. This map shows the uh, wind, cyclone wind signal levels. The whole Visayas area is pretty much under signal one. There's a section of northeast Mindanao that's under section two. Uh, this typhoon could still strengthen going forward. Um, I'm reporting on Wednesday. It's expected to hit, uh, make landfall in the eastern Visayas region on uh, Thursday, probably afternoon. That, that can always change uh, or evening and then move th across the central Visayas hitting uh, Palawan later, uh, probably late Friday, possibly. Anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the typhoon, a little bit about uh, storm surges. i uh, going to show you some uh, typhoon, what you call hurricanes in, in uh, many parts of the world and show you the historical tracks they usually take. Now, if you live in the, on the eastern seaboards of these islands, uh, you take the brunt of the typhoons. Uh, they generally move northward, but in this case, they're coming straight across the central Visayas. First, we'll take a look at the uh, app. Uh, it's on the, uh, you can get it on your computer, your laptop, uh, or your phone, an app on your phone called windy.com. And then we'll move over to Pagasa, the uh, government site here in the Philippines that tracks uh, storms and weather. Windy.com, windy.com, very interesting and free um, site resource. And you can also download uh, onto your phones uh, a similar app. Anyway, very, very inter interesting. Uh, you can you can move the map around, check out uh, your area of the world, and I know that over here I watch uh, USA News uh, for storms and various things. I know they've been getting big snowstorm, rainstorms across uh, California. Uh, I know they a, a big storm went through even Minnesota. I've got some relatives up here, and they had some major, uh, gosh, what uh, into the teen inches. Uh, but the, the, a couple of days later, it was into the, the 50s, I think, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Quite warm. A lot of that would have melted, caused some flooding probably. Anyway, we've got the Philippines over here, and, and this, is our, this is our typhoon, our, our tropical storm that we're watching. So let's zoom in, and you just use your scroll wheel or uh, to see where that's at right now. Now, down along the bottom, you can see you can... You can actually drag this, this timeline, and uh, see what they predict, how they predict where that's going to go. And you can see it going right over the central Visayas there, over Palawan, and off towards Vietnam. Anyway, we'll bring it back to where it's at right now. Very, inter very interesting sight. You can also over here on the right. Uh, you can uh, get uh, various things. You can get wind, uh, you can get the radar and satellite, wind gusts, rain and thunder, temperature, clouds, waves, air quality, more layers, L many more choices here. Uh, new snow, rain and thunder, temperature dew point, thunderstorms, freezing altitude, just a waves swell. Uh, wind waves, sea temperature, currents, ozone layer, aerosols. Just unbelievable how much uh, information you can uh, gain from this site. Now you should use this kind of information and additional risk information uh, for a number of factors. In, when you determine where you're going to live, vacation long term, uh, if you're going to retire here, because those outer islands, those eastern islands, the eastern side there, they normally get the storm surges. Now you can get storm surges further in the other island as well. That's always possible. Uh, but you want to understand that type of thing. Uh, Leyte, Samar, uh, Mindanao down there. M most of these, the majority of typhoons move move north, go up, might, they might go through the Manila area, through, through Luzon, they might even 
turned almost straight north and hit the northern section of uh, Luzon, the Batanes Islands, been hit a number of times this year already. Or they might go up towards Taiwan, Korea's, and, and Japan. So let's jump over to the uh, official government site, Pagasa, uh, P-A-G-A-S-A dot D-O-S-T dot gov dot P-H, and take a look at their tracking here. And this, uh, this kind of rectangular type box here, this is the, goes up to Taipei uh, and Taiwan, and uh, this box is the Philippines area of responsibility. Once a storm comes into that area, the Philippines uh, starts tracking it. And what they do, they change the name. Uh, so their name uh, for this is Odette, and uh, the international name is Rai, R-A-I. This is the track that they see, 12-15. Uh, so where it's at now, 12-16, Thursday, it's going to pretty much go right across the central Visayas and uh, Cebu, the Long Island here, Cebu City, right in the uh, center there. And we can go over here, you can go over to weather, you can go over flood, tropical cyclone, that's what we'll go. Tropical cyclone bulletin is active. Cyclone warning for shipping is active. So we'll click on that and see what it brings up here. And here we have the cyclone warning. They have the various signals here. Of course, that can change rather quickly. Uh, signal 2 on the uh, northeast coast of Mindanao. That can change. Uh, it just depends upon how much strength it gathers when it's uh, uh, in the Philippine Sea area. And you have additional information about winds and if you want to read through that. And here's some more uh, tropical cyclone information from Pegasus. Very interesting. More tropical cyclones, T TCs, are entering the Philippine Area of Responsibility, PAR, than anywhere else in the world. With the average of 20 TCs in this region per year, with about 8 or 9 of them crossing the Philippines. The peak of the typhoon season is July through October when nearly 70% of the typhoons develop. And uh, give you an idea how many tropical cyclones should you expect? The December 2021, one or two. January, zero or one. February, zero or one. March, zero one. April, zero one. May, one or two. You're getting into that transition period. May is generally the hottest uh, month of year uh, on average on average and here are uh, here are cyclone tracks with actual tracks from 1948 through uh, not through the year <laughs> 2015 2015 and it gives you a little idea and they've got them broken down by month and you will get variations depending upon the the weather systems, climate systems around the world, how they track out. And then you have some additional information. Uh, warning signal, signals are based on wind speed, but you also have other factors. Of course, you have the, the amount of rain, which is often a major factor. I've seen a number of uh, rainstorms that have done much more damage and flooding than uh, cyclones that have come right, right over us. Before I get uh, into more specific uh, typhoon tracks, I want to introduce you to Westpac uh, WX. That is a, a YouTube channel, and he's got Facebook, a number of other sites as well. He's a, uh, a weather forecaster, does a lot of work, has, has worked out of Japan for a long time. I think he's back in the U.S. now, but puts out some really good West Pacific uh, weather information. Check out his channel. So, and there's lots of information available uh, over here, and you can uh, drop down. There's annual report on Philippine tropical cyclones. And anyway, when we go over here, we can pick a year, 2020. Uh, so we'll come down here. I want to give you an idea of how these things track and uh, why you might use this tracking to decide whether you're going to live in an area or not. Now here was Ambo, uh, Vong Fong. Um, you've got the Philippine name and you have the international name. 
And there again, this dotted line is the Philippine area responsibility. Even if they just clip a corner, or may, they might come in and then go out and go north. But anyway, uh, this one kind of, they're hard to, they can be quite difficult. And I've heard newscasters, weather newscasters, a number of times saying, well, I'm not too worried. I'm not too, you know, the the tracking is out here still, and, and it's still pretty weak and not organized, and they'll say, I'm not too worried about this, but it, it hits these warmer waters in the Philippine Sea, and it can pick up uh, strength very, very quickly and turn into a typhoon, even a super typhoon. Generally, uh, you know, based on this, most typhoons come in from this direction. Occasionally, you'll get a typhoon that that uh, sets up out here, but that's unusual. Uh, but they're going to hit the eastern seaboards here. So if you live on the eastern seaboards and uh, up here in Batanas Islands as well, and you have Taiwan up here, uh, you're going to get the brunt of those. Now, I don't know if you can see this this little sliver of an island here. This is Cebu Island, and what happens usually, not always is that these outer islands, uh, Leyte and Samar, even Bohol and Luzon up here, they will take the brunt, the, the eastern side will take the brunt of the uh, force and they will weaken, just like in Florida and other parts of the world, uh, or, or the Gulf of Mexico when they, in the USA, when, when they come online, they, it starts losing its strength, same thing here. So there's been a number of cases where uh, typhoons have come right across the Cebu area. And I've stayed up. I've stayed up till 3 in the morning a couple times. I think once in uh, 2016, once in, once in 2017, waiting for to experience the typhoon. And it never even, uh, never turned into much of anything but, a, but a rain showers. But um, not that you shouldn't be prepared because 2013, a, a massive uh, typhoon, Yolanda, uh, came through and did some major, major damage. It, it came through here, did uh, damage to Bohol, the northern half of uh, Cebu Island. And there again, even though, you know, it shows the, it shows the uh, typhoons as uh, fairly small, but they're they have a large influence. The cone of influence stretches out, so they did some probably did some major damage, uh, major flooding up here in the Batanes Islands, maybe along the the, the uh, eastern coast of uh, Luzon up here. And here again, if they come, if they come into their responsibility, I believe it's about 22 on average, 22. Uh, tropical de depression storms that come in the Philippines uh, area of responsibility each year and here yeah even if they just bounce in and out they're uh, considered part and they generally as a general rule but they don't always follow our man-made rules uh, they generally will swerve north here again um, now well, here was a couple that came across Luzon, and this one had a major, major impact on uh, the Manila area, Ophel. I think Papito as well had some major, uh, had some major flooding in in this whole area around in here. I think, if I remember correctly, um, Typhoon Quinta, Molavi, went uh, right across. Went right across the Manila area, Manila area being right here, uh, Cebu down here. Of course, you got Mindanao Island down here, which doesn't get hit very often, but uh, they do, and when they do, they get some major flooding. Um, so you can see the tracks. You can see that generally, if you live on that eastern seaboard of these islands, that's where the big big brunt of these take place. Another one went right through the Manila area here. Likewise. Now this is one that uh, actually did. It didn't become a typhoon until it got 
this far picked up strength and went across the Mindanao area and you'll see and, and Palawan as well and there's your legend the uh, super typhoon of the colors it is best to be prepared now this was a couple days uh, before uh, this storm is coming through uh, now today the day before it's uh, been mostly cloudy all day long but we haven't had any rain it's uh, middle of the afternoon and it'll probably be into the morning hours before we uh, start seeing that or even uh, tomorrow afternoon uh, anyway it's good to be prepared uh, I've got a, a a couple of water purification like a water straw and that I can purify water with a person should have a you know grab and go bag uh, so if you need to go someplace if there's if there's some calamity what they call it here uh, you've, you've got a flashlight you've got a little bit of food you got a little bit of water or some way to purify water uh, maybe a change of clothes uh, extra batteries uh, a charging pack for your phone etc etc know how to uh, stay in contact with your friends and relatives anyway stay safe stay healthy and I'll see you next time